One of Professor Joseph's most important contributions is his establishment of a broad framework for study that brings together overlapping circles of local, national, and international politics as reciprocal influences in black radicalism. In addition to constructing this historiographical frame for expanding the field of inquiry, Professor Joseph's paper also highlights the need for an epistemic and narrative shift in synthetic histories of the post-war era, so challenging the declensionist view of black power, and also for how future studies can continue the work of historical recovery. First, I'd like to talk briefly about what this epistemic shift means, and then discuss how it, it directly informs ongoing historical research. I will draw examples from other recent scholarship in the field and from my own work on the Bay Area Black Power Movement to demonstrate how expanding the parameters of inquiry and a priori categories will allow much needed historical research to take place. The central argument in rethinking the black power era is the call for scholarship to finally leave behind the declensionist narrative that relegated many of the developments of the late 60s to the realm of spectacular and expressive politics that undermined the glorious democratic and interracial movements earlier in the decade. Too long, the established view of the modern black freedom struggle has privileged a nonviolent southern movement that achieved legislative victories of civil rights and voting rights only to be disrupted by the unexpected outbreak of violence and wars. In this account, the Los Angeles Rebellion inaugurated a new era on, of black power and armed struggle in the urban north. In an older generation of historiography, this shift was associated with the retreat to an expressive and spontaneous politics that sacrificed concrete organizing in favor of spectacular display and political theater. In the last decade, a variety of different scholars have challenged this view by documenting the history and momentum of northern civil rights movements and its continuities with black power and black radicalism of the late 60s. At the same time, um, a new scholarship tracing the breadth and variety of black freedom struggles in the South have displaced the singular focus on interracial and liberal nonviolent direct action. Black nationalism and armed self-defense once attributed almost exclusively to the nihilistic tendencies of the Northern Black Power organizations, most especially the Black Panther Party, increasingly appear as an integral part of African American life in the South. This can be seen in the research of Stephen Hahn in the 19th century, Mary Rowlandson's work on grassroots Garveyism in the early 20th century, as well as post-war studies by Hassan Jeffries, Emily Crosby, Lance Hill, Timothy Tyson, Akinyele Umoja, and Mohammed Ahmed, and many, many others. Also, in my forthcoming book, Living for the City, Black Liberation, the Southern Diaspora, I consider how the Black Panther Party and its earlier antecedents in the Bay Area drew on traditions of Southern radicalism in West Coast cities. Black radicals turned to, Ma Black radicals turned to Maoism reflected not only the cross-currents of the Bay Area left, but the migrant background of the leadership and rank and file, many of whom were less than a generation removed from Southern agrarian struggles. Despite this new body of scholarship, elements of the declensionist narrative have endured in the tendency to see varieties of black power and black radicalism as the product of liberal defeat and the failure to redistribute jobs and economic and political opportunity more broadly. Joseph argues, for example, quote, Black power's impact on American democracy remains under-theorized. In documenting a richer and more nuanced and expansive history of the era, new scholarship is placing the movement's critique of post-war racial liberalism in American democracy at the core of its evolution. One of the compelling aspects of Joseph's framework is the broad way in which he defines democracy, which includes not only institutions of electoral government, but culture, politics, domestic and foreign policy, universities, prisons, churches, and other social institutions. Joseph challenges the narrative of declension by arguing that black power organizations, ideologies, and discourses must be understood on their own terms and in the context of a multifaceted black freedom struggle with a range of strategic, ideological, and regional expressions. Working in this vein requires unearthing a broader history of continuity of black nationalist and black power tendencies in addition to documenting the structural constraints and black economic and political opportunity. Using my own research on the San Francisco Bay Area as an example, I'd like to show how this epistemic shift away from the declensionist view is actually essential to the work of historical recovery. 
One of the effects of understanding black power's development as the product of another movement's defeat is the failure to carefully trace genealogies of organizations and their direct antecedents. One of the best examples of this is in studies of the Bay Area Black Panther Party. Much previous work on the Panthers has understood them as a logical extension of street culture, urban poverty, and the failure of great society programs to redistribute jobs and opportunity. The party described itself as a lumpen organization that sought to organize Brothers Off the Block and they've been studied just as that. However, careful excavation of the party's origins reveals its strong moorings in an early movement of black student activism in California's public universities. And what I wanted to highlight here is early black student activism that actually predates the height of the black power movement. So black studies is often understood as the product of black power. But if you actually look at the history of uh, public education in California, late 50s and early 60s, it's through organizing to have black studies classes, um, early black student unions, that many of the social networks that generate the black power movement are first formed.